My client proposal process is about 90% hands-off due to the workflow I've created using Notion and Paperform. And in this mini workshop, I'm gonna give you the exact setup so you can save yourself time, headaches, and finally, finally, remove the fear of being ghosted by your leads. And actually remove being ghosted by your leads. If we haven't met yet, my name's Sarah. I'm not only a certified Notion consultant, but I'm a digital architect, helping client-based businesses work better online. At some point between 2019 and 2021, I realized that I wasn't going to be confident in sales unless I was honestly as hands-off as possible, because as humans, it's inevitable that we fear rejection, and there's no way to be successful, especially as a freelancer, unless you rip those emotions away from sales and put that energy elsewhere. And so I started to workshop my workflow, as my brilliant friend Christina says, and built a much better automated process that we still rely on today at my agency systems. Since developing this new process, we've been able to achieve an 87% acceptance rate on all of our proposals and 100% response rate from all of our leads, which means even those that decline, communicate it. And as I casually remind everyone in my audience and my client leads, ghosting is only cool at Halloween. And seriously, you will not hurt my feelings by being honest. My process includes three tools, Notion, Paperform, and their Stripe integration so we can collect any applicable booking fees. But to get started, let's build out a top tier client proposal Notion template that does most of the heavy lifting for you. And so that way all paper form has to do is slide smoothly in, bring home the sale, or if not, at least tell us why. So in Notion, you'll wanna create two databases, a client CRM to house their contact information, and then a leads tracker to house all of your proposals. And some extra data we'll talk about a little later on. Now this third database is at your discretion. So when a client signs their proposal, I'm currently uploading ours to a file property on the proposal doc itself, which yes, is a manual task. You could create a third database to auto dump paper form entries to using a webhook and then build a relation to connect it into your lead tracker. It's honestly your call. So a proposal template. Every offer you have can vary with such key differences, such as price, timeline, and scope. And so instead of manually typing into a single design template each and every time, I actually recommend creating one template for each offer you have. Then you'll only need to update the project dates, client information, and perhaps the budget if it varies. So all in all, so far by creating a Notion template for our proposals, we've saved on average two hours per client. Now, over the past five years, I've also learned that the more information you have in your proposals, the more likely you are to land any client you write one for. This key is to leave them with as few questions as possible. And in an ideal world, they're only left asking, where do I sign? But if you're not comfortable building on Notion yet, don't worry, I do have a proposal template down below that you can download for yourself. So I like to add a few key elements to my proposals that help us stand out and they all tie back to personality. I first kick off the proposal with a short welcome video and a message, reintroducing myself and highlighting the purpose of the project. So at the very least, they just watch this quick two minute video, even if they don't actually read the document. From there, I include three components, scope, timeline, and expectations at every phase of the project. And lastly, cost, including the client's payment plan options, again, Give them everything you possibly can. I do take heavy advantage of Notion's toggle feature to keep that proposal looking crisp and incredibly detailed. So now let's talk proposal shipping and responses. When I first started freelancing, my process looked a little like this. First, I would manually create an overly designed proposal in Canva. And while it was beautiful, it was hefty. And then I would draft an email and read it over several times, doubting myself and my prices. When I'd finally send that email off, I'd then spend countless minutes refreshing my inbox to see if they responded. And then of course, when they didn't, I would follow up the next week if I didn't hear from them and then follow up again and then again, cry a little bit before eventually moving on, realizing they just didn't wanna work with me. Desperate, right? But now my process looks like this. 
I dive in by duplicating an appropriate proposal template based on our conversation, spend maybe 15 minutes updating their basic information, grabbing a proposal email template that I also have saved in my Gmail account, linking the proposal before shipping it off finally, and moving on to do other shit. In order to be completely detached from this process, I'm using paper form to build a proposal response form and capture every lead's response, whether it's a yes or a no. To do so, this form includes conditional formatting that populates the correct follow-up questions based on what the lead clicks. So let's build this form out. Under the yes response, what we want to do is include legal contact information, such as company name, contact name and email, and mailing address. Because this form is provided with a hard timestamp after submission, this can be used as a legal scope agreement, which means in turn, you can create a universal contract also using the same format here, Notion and paper form, and save yourself even more admin time. And I actually have a video on my channel going over this that I'll link down below. Another feature we can add is the ability to charge a flat booking fee after the client hits submit. What you'll want to do is connect your Stripe account to Paperform in order to achieve this. Full transparency here, we actually charge a $500 booking fee that's non-refundable. This covers admin work for the project setup itself. The secret sauce here is that no option. It allows your client leads to decline projects guilt-free, as many small businesses, freelancers, etc., tend to ghost proposals after being told the project cost because they probably didn't do a whole lot of research ahead of time, realize they can't afford it, and then they're uncomfortable being honest and saying so. And low-key, y'all, this used to infuriate me because I would spend close to three hours prepping, shipping off a proposal to not even receive a simple email saying thanks, but no thanks. And hey, I get it. But in my opinion, business to business, woman to woman, this is so freaking disrespectful that I had to come up with a solution or I was going to lose my mind. And so we'll want to add that no option to our response form with a follow-up question, okay? So this is also key. We want to add a follow-up question asking, why are you declining? And you can offer a few reasons such as budget, timeline, or an other, and so that they can add their own notes. And so one final step we need to set up is where these responses are going to live. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's kind of two routes that you can take, either creating a Notion database webhook and auto dumping them in, or manually downloading the PDF and uploading to a specific proposal it belongs to. We do the latter because we actually use our proposals as one half of our contract and need to be able to access it for legal purposes. And we include it in the client's portal after they sign on. But that's it. Simply embed the form into your Notion proposal templates, resize, and it's ready to use. And now it wouldn't be me if I didn't share a few of my additional asshole policies for client proposals. The first is that I only allow 72 hours for a proposal response. You can actually use Notion sharing feature to expire links up in the share button. What this expiration does is it keeps us top of mind with the client lead and somewhat prevents them from shopping around. Next, I have a hard ghosting policy, and that is included on every discovery call and in proposal, but I haven't made that clear in this video. If you fail to communicate or simply don't respond to me at all, I decline all future work without hesitation. This is a key way to build respect with client leads, because honestly, if they can't take 30 seconds to email you, they're probably going to be a terrible client. You can put that on my headstone, period, point blank. I make a point to document such activity in our leads tracker. So that way, if they ever pop back up, I know to say no. And I do this with simple notion tagging. And you should actually document all decline reasons in your leads tracker, whether it was budget or anything else because this will actually give you a clear picture on how to navigate your client proposal process to increase your client conversion rates. So let's recap. First, what we're going to do is create a Notion proposal template for every offer that we have that we write proposals for. Next, we're going to create a universal response form in paper form to capture legal information, collect booking fees, or at least the data on why a client might not be moving forward. Lastly, embed this form into your Notion templates, and then drum roll, use the templates to make money. Thanks so much for tuning into my mini workshop today, and a huge thank you to Paperform for partnering with me on this video. 
If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button because I post business system and process videos just like this every week on my channel. So I will see you very soon.